Hey YouTube, I've got a one terabyte USB hard drive in for data recovery. And in over 15 years of doing hard drive data recovery, this is one of those really rare, peculiar problems that I just don't see very often. Once you plug the USB cable in, after about one minute, it blue screens any computer it's connected to. So the white screen in the background is disk management, me trying to get this hard drive to detect. And eventually, after one minute, it does detect, and then it blue screens and crashes the computer. So let's try and get all the data off this hard drive. USB hard drives totally suck to recover data, so I'm going to convert this to a SATA hard drive by simply getting the identical PCB, the same technology. All I need to do is swap the little BIOS chip with the adaptive data. So I'm going to remove the ROM chip from the SATA PCB first just to make it more efficient when I'm transferring and I'm going to come in nice and quick with the heat almost 400 degrees so in and out nice and fast now we're going to do the same with the USB PCB and so I don't forget the orientation I'll make sure I see the little dot so I know which way it goes back on. Now this one is a Winbond chip, 25Q80, which I'm pretty sure is one megabytes capacity. Okay, and we're gonna move back to the SATA PCB. Now, I've gotta make sure it's lined up. I don't want any solder to short any pins. It's a little bit on an angle, that's because the solder is a bit balled up, but if I get the heat, I should be able to at least tack it, because the hot air will blow it away. Now, I'm being very careful where I'm pointing my hot air. I'm only pointing it on the pins that I want to melt. This one is pretty easy to do, because there's not a lot of other electronics nearby, but you've got a little capacitor here, and I was aware of that, so I wanted to make sure that I didn't heat it up because I would have lost it. Now, before I power this on, I'll just make sure all the pins are soldered correctly. It looks good. Uh, it's a bit dirty down here, and we'll clean the PCB as well. And look at that, we've now got a SATA hard drive. So let's turn the hard drive on. It's a Toshiba, and we'll see if we can get this to spin up an ID. And there it is, the SATA conversion from a USB PCB. It's come ready. We've got a correct ID up the top left here. We'll enter a testing utility to make sure this hard drive is working okay. Let's have a look at the smart table. We can't get smart. That's all right. Um, let's see if we can just actually access the data area and we can't. So we got a common Toshiba problem which is probably why it was set offline with the USB but that's okay I can fix that. So I'll just double check to see if I can access the drive through this tool which I cannot. Um, let's have a look on the map. All these sectors are black so it's not returning any data when we try to read it. We'll have to clear all that. Um, yeah, clear here. Seven sectors. Okay, I'll just clear those sectors out because I want to reread them again. Now I just got to use a special mode. And this is to help solve this problem with Toshiba hard drives, which is kind of common. And let's just click play and start. There we go. We've still got problems, but we've got access to the drive. So we will see if we can find a file system. Yes, NTFS. Okay, so the drive's obviously got problems. That's to be expected. Doesn't matter if it's blue screening or if I've converted it from USB to SATA. I'm always going to expect problems, and we've got. We don't have four. Is this a 4K? No, it's a. 512 bytes per logical sector drive, so <clears throat> let's see if we can find, yes we can. Okay, so I'm just going to do a master file table scan because it wasn't able to correctly detect it and load it. 
It kind of did when it was in USB mode. It, it did pop up. It showed tables, file tables. But now that I've converted to SATA, there's obviously something different again working. So we'll have to wait for this to finish. This drive has got a lot of data on it. I can tell by the amount of records that it has to scan through. So 1%. I'll have to come back when it's finished. And here it is, we found all the data. So I can start to image and clone all that and give it back to the customer. Now if you have a hard drive that you also want to mail in for data recovery, I will leave a link in the description and I'll see you guys in the next video.